Hey, hello everybody. Welcome to... Ah, there we go. Hello everybody. I'm just gonna let this live stream work its way into the YouTube-verse. What we're gonna be doing tonight on the workbench is painting some Song of Ice and Fire. Yeah, let's just get rid of this element right here. I'm gonna be working on some Song of Ice and Fire Night's Watch. Yeah, and I've really, really enjoyed working on these guys. So we've got a few finished ones right here. Now this one was done in acrylics. What we want to do is take Night's Watch like this. This is a Ranger Hunter. And we want to start to add some oil paints so that we can make them look a little bit more we'll say like this. So that's all done with oils and it's really nice with all of these flowing cloaks and everything else what are we going to use? We're going to use some traditional oil paints all from Windsor Newton but we're also going to use some of these so these are from MIG Ammo and you'll notice a few different things about these first we this nifty little applicator right here which means we can get the paint on our palette really easy with not a lot of fuss. Another thing you're going to notice is this is more the consistency of that same acrylic paint that you're used to working with. Now some of you may have already worked with these or with oils and if you're an old traditional oil painter like me you know that oils typically come out of the container they look a little bit more like peanut butter. And peanut butter is yummy but oil paint is not. And that what lead me to my next little, this is not necessarily a rule, call it a very strong suggestion. So we've got odorless paint thinner right here. This is from Speedball. I think this is their in-house brand, Mona Lisa, whatever. Now this, believe it or not, cost almost as much as a set of 10 Winsor Newton oil paints. I've got it on Amazon, but it's well worth it because not only is it truly odorless, because I can have this thing open underneath my nose and not even notice it. It's way gentler on the paints. And you're going to see that as we work with this. And we, we basically almost turn our paints into washes, but they're oils. So I mentioned that oil painting set. I got this a few years ago on Amazon. I think it was $25, maybe $26. And as you can see, I've got lots of it left. And this may last me almost forever. One thing you'll see, hopefully, as I keep working with the oils here, is it just takes less paint. When you put out these, the oil brush or stuff, it only takes just a few dabs of this. You're not painting on a piece of canvas. You know, we're not trying to have a half inch layer of paint across a 30 by 40 surface. All we're doing is, is just paint one of these little guys right here. So it just doesn't take much paint. And you'll see, now all of these blends, these were all done with the oil paints. I know that's a big thing that everybody wants. Now they want the smooth blends and all that. Well, hey, that's a little bit easier to achieve with the oils. So I'm just scrolling down here to the stream chat just to make sure in case anybody's got some questions. Hey, Waleed, how's it going? He found it. Yay. Um, so anybody that's doing this, uh, actually, Waleed, is a, he's a fellow miniature oil painter. He has been converted Yes, the, the new push across the galaxy to use oil paints. I'm going to show you something here. So the brushes. These are number eight round craft brushes. You can see there's looks like two different brushes here. Actually, the same brush. This is a brush that's relatively new, kind of unmolested, undestroyed. This one gets a little more beat up, and you say, oh, it's not any good anymore. Actually, it is. Because speaking of oil painting, look, we have a filbert brush. 99% of the time when I was working with oils, I used filbert brushes. This is better, though. It's about twice as long as a filbert brush. It holds more paint. I remember we're looking to, to blend our oil paints. Well, what we need is a nice curved soft edge here. And still, once you get these, you can still get a decent point on them almost like a chisel edge, all of these things that we'll use. Mention where I got them from. 
so here you go. Check that out. That is five dollars for twelve. You don't even have to go to a Hobby Lobby. You can get them online. So that probably opens up. You know, if you don't have a Hobby Lobby near you, then it makes it a little easier for you to grab those. Now, again, I'm trying not to issue too many rules or edicts, but one of those things is if you lick your brushes, I would say don't do that unless you want to end up in the hospital. Speaking of brushes, this is a homemade oil brusher. It is the same tube of Payne's Gray that you'll see me use later on the episode here. This is a nail polish container. You see I got a brush there, got this, and guess what? It's designed not to be knocked over. You don't want nail polish all over your table and I don't know if you can hear that, but there's actually a little steel agitator in there, so it's possible to make your own. And this is what I used. This is the Payne's Gray. Let's get some... Oh, wait, we almost forgot this. Oh, we almost forgot our sponges. Makeup sponges of all kinds. Say, so what in the world are you going to do with those? Well, you'll see those pretty soon as we do some quick preliminary glazes of oils. Hey there, Jericho. Oh, hey, James. How's it going? So this is what we're starting with here. And I will show you the primer in question. There you go. Stano Res from Badger Airbrush. They make about 12 different colors. Technically a lot more if you throw in some of the ghost tints with it. But you can see it's kind of a tan sort of a color. I did a little bit of pre-shading with this. You can brush it on if you don't have an airbrush. I think we spent two years brushing Badger Primer on the miniatures before we ever got an airbrush. So it's it's flexible, it's neat, and when you're priming lots of figures all at once, well, you don't have to worry about temperature, like when it's 20 below outside or raining. The idea is what we will do is take it from that to something like this, See where we've done sort of a preliminary staining of the figure just like as if it was a canvas and then we move on a little bit further and then we start to actually apply some colors to this and some light and some mid-tones and then you can see we carry it just a bit further this is the one I was working on last night and he is still you can see he's still shiny because he's still wet so if I was to take one of these sponges and go like this I could wipe off nearly all the paint so I guess if there's people that like to not have to strip miniatures to change their paint job, oils is for you. Just take it go, whoosh, it's all gone. So that's very handy. Oh, hey there, James. Oh, and oh, Waleed says that there's uh, some 50% off on their oil paints, which, yeah, Michaels too, they, they tend to have that 50% off coupon thing every month, or 40%, I think it is. If you can go snag them then, that's not a bad time either. Now, here, let's get to some basing here. And I wanted to show you these because folks have had questions about that. The basing was fairly basic. You can see that's just tree bark, gravel, twigs. A lot of this is stuff that's just laying on the ground. Once you prime it, it starts to look pretty darn natural. And then once you paint it and add some additional foliage there you go so it didn't take a lot not a lot of money invested in that basing but yet it does the trick you can see we even got you even got a little tree branch over here oh hey bethany how's it going she was on the the first stream there that was that was a little bit different time that was i think it started at 2 30 a.m this is supposed to be more for the american crowd so brave Bethany is she survived the first one she's gonna hopefully survive this one too out comes the dark umber raw umber dark umber we're gonna do the Payne's gray next throw that out so we're gonna start out with these traditional oils to do that preliminary glaze now there's other nifty colors I can throw out there could even throw out this phthalo green. And I did it on one of these guys just to show you what might happen. Because this is not about 
all right, if you do this and this and this and this, you get this. It's more about, hey, did you ever think of doing this? Because it never occurred to me to ever use oils, uh, miniatures. So a few years ago, when I was watching a Facebook Live, and I went, that guy's using oil paints on a miniature. So I got to try that. So here's our white spirits over here. See that? Let's get that cup a little bit closer where you can see it. Now the silver cloud being between jobs. <laughs> That's always, yeah, never a fun thing, although it does leave more time for miniatures. I that And that is a silver lining, more time for miniatures. Because pretty much all of us would love to have more time for miniatures. I would, at least more time for my own. That's probably not going to happen. My request for a 36-hour day continues to be ignored, so I'm stuck with that 24-hour cycle. So I'm going to show you the oil brushers here and where you can get those. So this is the MIG Ammo site. There are a bunch of these. I think there's two sets of 21. You're not going to need all 42 of those. You can see they come in smaller sets here. I've even found them on Amazon for similar price to what you see here. I'm also going to show you one of my Night's Watch. Now, this is a tutorial that I have going on right now for the Patreon page. This is a five-episode thing. Notice that there's more blues here. Not so much with the greens. And he's got a snow base because this is more of an official color scheme. See, his bow is even a different color. And Night's Watch right here. If you're wondering, so this is, see the official color scheme there? How oh, it's got a little bit purple, mostly bluish grays, some browns in there. So that is why, that's why I took the approach that I did. So here's another one. So you can see the whole thing there, a little bit darker. And I'll go back to the main scene here. As long as it lets me, there we go. Oh, we have a question here. Uh, do you suggest that gray versus black? Well, this is not a black. It looks black, but this is actually essentially a dark bluish gray. When I cut this with any sort of a light color, even now, when I just do this, you're going to see the difference. All right, and that's why I'm going to do a little trick here. You'll see me do this a few times. So I'm going to make this palette a little bit bigger here. And you'll see, as I thin this out, see the brown. And then we'll do the same thing with our blue. Look at that. It's, oh gosh, what was the name of it? It was an old Games Workshop color, Shadow Gray. It's like a purplish, bluish gray. And there you have it. Because what's interesting is that we're going to put these two together. And you'll see that those actually get that much darker because blue and brown make black. Thing is when you cut this with any sort of a lighter color if you got a little more blue in your mix you're gonna get a more bluish result. So figure here and if I don't respond right away to a comment I couldn't tell you what the lag time is but there's definitely a lag of at least mm, five seven seconds could be more could be less so we got our palette back to normal size here's our figure and i'm just going to start out on the base here and you can see it looks looks like a wash looks like i just took some water and i i often say this as i'm working with my eyes i say i'm going to water it down well when you hear me say that i'm not using water I'm using the white spirits. And again, high quality white spirits is just the way to go. Now here is some of that phthalo green. I'm going to let it mix with that blue. And as you can see, neatness and precision are vital at this early stage. You can tell we're staying in the lines. It's just, look at, look at how dainty and neat that is. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's none of that. For those of you that have seen me paint just my regular acrylic stuff, 
you know this is pretty much what I do with the acrylics too. It's it's a very similar thing except when it comes to maybe larger scale stuff or like this where I have a whole bunch of these to paint. Working with oils, oh gosh, and I've said this a couple of times, it's almost like sitting in a lawn chair because there's not that frenzy of, Ooh, I better get to this before it dries. I better get to this before it dries. I've got 10 miniatures and I'm only on number seven. It's going to dry. Oils, well, there's a reason why you use them. They don't dry so quickly. Huge advantage. Some of these miniatures, like that one that I was showing you there, he's wet enough that I could quite literally remove all of the paint that's on him right down to the primer. What that means is that it's workable for days. So if I want to come back in there and blend that cloak a little more, hey, I can do it. So we've got a nice big old black mess here, right? I'm take one of these sponges and I'm going to start at the top, run down here. So you can see what we're starting to do. We're starting to establish our lights and darks. But watch what happens here. See as I rotate this, it's got red. Now it's got green. And now it's more of a brownish color here. It's almost more of a bluish green. As we get down to the base, it's going to be a different color. That is why I was shifting those colors around. I do it with the acrylic stuff. But again, here, this stuff, as I go to paint, that's still going to be wet. Usually with the acrylics, by the time I get around to that, it's dry. Now you see you got a sponge here that's pretty much loaded up with oil paint. Take the scissors here. And we can do a couple of things. See how we have a fresh sponge to work with, but you can also change the shape of your sponge. You just cut it into a different shape, and then, let's say... We need to get into here. Well, that's a little bit easier to get into there now. A little bit easier. So I know a lot of people, and Waleed has asked me to, ah, how about those water-soluble oil paints? And I'm sure those are neat, but to me, I just I love oil paints. And I want the traditional kind because there's things I can manipulate with that that I just cannot do with acrylic paints. So now we've got, see, we'll compare them to another guy right here. Not only do we have this a little bit darker, but we've got some color in those shadows. So I'm going to go over here to my camera controls, maybe bump up the brightness a little bit at this point. And something else I want to also get into here. So see how there's a distinct a difference here. Oh yeah, here we go. You can see we've got a whole different green here. This is the other reason why I wanted to use oils, because each guy was supposed to be a little bit different than the other. It wasn't supposed to be that they went to some kind of costume store and got the exact same robes and put them all on. I'm trying to get a little different color there. But this is another little fun thing that I like to do. So I'll get these guys here and we are going to go boom. Just turned off the color intensity. It's black and white, but yet you can see the shading looks exactly the same. So that is what we're going to explore here. Warm versus cool, saturated versus unsaturated, all with oils. So I'm going to try and bring my chat back over here. And sometimes I might have to scroll here to see what the newest, latest things are. It looks like it scrolls for me automatically. So I'm going to get right back into this. Now, you guys don't want to see me doing this for a half an hour. So I've actually got a few figures where I've already done this. See so here, this is the blue and black mixed together. So it's going to be more dark, more neutral. This guy may have blonde hair at some point. Oil paint, surprisingly enough, cover things really well. 
I guess I'm sure a lot of people are asking, so what's the deal with this starting out this this wash here like this? Why not just start to apply base coats like you would on a standard miniature? Well, I, I don't know how many times you've watched maybe Bob Ross or for me it was Bill Alexander when I was a kid. They start out with something more like this. They're basically staining the canvas because it gets down into all the crevices for one thing. But with oils, and this is, oof, try not to give you rules, but this kind of is, with oil paints, thick paint will stick to thinner paint and vice versa. So what are we gonna do? What's our next layer gonna be after this being so thin? Well, you guessed it, we are gonna go much thicker but then you say, okay, well, what do you do after that? Now you, you said thick doesn't stick onto thick. Well, thin paint sticks onto thicker paint. So what we will do is after we get to this stage. So this is where I started to apply some of those thicker paints. Eventually, we start to work thinner, thinner with smaller brushes, that sort of thing. So you'll see all that play out. So we're going to do one more little sponge thing here. Look at that. just comes right off of there, but it leaves us with a color. And what I'm going to do is take my scissors here. And you think that sponge is useless. Actually, we can get a little more out of that sponge. And now I've got a sponge that can get down into this area and remove some of that. And see how this has a reddish tinge to it? more of a brownish tinge, a greenish tinge. This is the nifty part about oils. When you're working on, see something like this. Now, I first discovered oils doing historical miniatures where everything is various shades of green and khaki and brown. Everything. Well, here it's kind of, well, greens and browns, various shades. Now we're trying to get a little bit more of a boost, but you can see the difference in the pants color there. It's more of a yellowish green, this is more of a bluish green. You can see here it gets really almost blue, and then down here it gets almost a warm green here. That is the kind of variety that we want to see. We want to see lots of variety like that. So I'm just making sure, okay, looks like the stream is still okay. We're Base, I think we have an ice storm here or something. I want to make sure that I don't lose the internet on you. All right, you say, well, we've got all this traditional painting going on right here. Where's the oil brushers? And we're about to do that. So we're going to throw out some of the oil brushers. And I'm going to make sure that you can see them on the palette. So that's on the palette. And again, I suggest put out a little bit. Now look at how much more like miniature paint that is. So there's a yellow ochre. It's called summer soil. It's yellow ochre. So it's got a little more yellow to it than that. That's more of a that's a burnt sienna. That's more of a raw sienna. Now we're gonna get out I got a grayish color here, this dusty earth. What you won't see is white. I almost never use it when I'm using my acrylics, and I never use it with oils either. There's just no reason when you got something like this. So I think we got, I always call these off whites. When I'm doing my acrylic stuff, it's usually, oh, what is that? Maiden Flesh, and what's the other thing? I think it's Maggot White. Basically, one is a reddish white, the other one's a bluish white. It's yeah, nothing earth shattering. So I'm going to throw out a little bit of this rust color and say, well, okay, it's pretty much just like that burnt sienna over there. There is a difference. Oil brushers, they're designed to dry faster. Uh, now, the regular oil paints, those are going to dry faster than normal because, well, look what we've done. We've touched, uh, what, 70% white spirits, maybe maybe 80%. So you're not going to 
you're reducing the drying time because, well, we're getting rid of a lot of the oil that's in there. So these are things when people say, oh my gosh, that miniature is going to take a week to dry. No. Some of these I did just a few nights ago, and they're practically completely dry at this point. They maybe have, uh, I want to give them maybe one more night to sit there before I could either put some acrylics over the top of this or just do my regular varnish thing and then do my landscape stuff. So the timing will be a little bit different with your oils. Okay, this is a neat one here. What color is this? Uh, let's see if I can find That's this. I think it's this color right here, this ultramarine violet. This is pretty neat. Uh, I'm going to shake this up here a little bit. It's got a little bit of purple in there. I'm going to throw this, boom, right there. Now that I've got these lighter colors out here, here let's grab let's grab this brush. I'm going to do my little thing with the palette again. Right? And I'm going to go back to our chat here. Uh, you can see it. So I've got this grayish color here. I'll drop this here and let's grab some of that Payne's gray. And look at that. Look at that really nice bluish gray color. I can lighten it up even more. The more that I put in there, the more the blue you see. So if that was a black, it would be just dead. It'd be a dead gray, nothing interesting whatsoever going on there. And that's important for your shadows. And if you're going to do the non-metallic stuff like I do, it's even more important. So same color. You cut it down. The raw umber here. Cut down a little more. Let's put it next to it. So you can see we have, if we lighten it up just a touch, here, a little more. Those two are virtually the same level of lightness as I kill that color intense. Oh, can't do it on that camera. Never mind. Can only do it on my regular camera. So sorry. But they're virtually the same amount of light and dark. That phthalo green. Let's do the same thing. Is it on the palette still? Yep, down on the bottom here. Yeah, let's, let's now look at that. Look at that. I'm going to throw one more little color thing at you, and then we'll promise we'll get to painting stuff. So there's a typical rule of a warm color comes forward and a cool color recedes, right? Well, I don't know. I'm going to put that over here. What color does your eye see first? I'm pretty sure it sees that. This is the hardest thing to wrap my head around, this right here. Why does your eye look at this? Because it's phthalo green. Thalo green is pff, it's bright, just like alizarin crimson versus, say, I don't know, maybe a cadmium red medium or something like that. All right, so we'll we'll start doing some painting here. I'm just throwing this stuff out for you. When I do my regular painting videos, this just gets thrown in to a typical video is about two two hours long, between 100 and 120 minutes. And as you see up there on the screen, sign up for the Patreon page. You can see all of this crazy, wacky stuff. Oil demos, acrylic demos, object source lighting, freehand, basing, foliage, you name it. It's, it's all there. Whether it's a Dark Sword miniature, a creature, ca creature caster, Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll flash some of those figures for you as we go along. So what I just do, I grabbed a little bit of that phthalo green, grabbed some of my Payne's gray. But what did you see me not grab? What is not in the brush? None of this. There is no, here we go. There's none of that white spirit center. It's just straight up, straight up paint, 100%. Remember I told you about the filbert brush? Check that out. Why am I doing that? Well, here, yeah, let's, let's drop a little bit of this on this part right here. Like so, and you say, what in the world? That's just a huge mess. And that is, when you have a huge mess, you know you're right on target. 
as people flee in terror. Yeah, the, the shock value of some of these demos is it's just worth it when you are when you enjoy seeing people shocked and terrorized painting wise. So see I just kinda took whatever was in the brush, let that gray mix with it. Okay, let's try another guy over here. So that one had a little bit more of a bluish green to it. Now if I wanted you can get other colors. This is a neat one here, olive green. It's a little bit of a warmer green. But you know what? I've got an oil brusher for that. So I'm going to I'm going to break that one out right now. I just got to find him. So here's my olive green. Again, grabbing this because I want that to dry just a touch faster. I found if you mix these two together, one kind of makes the other one dry faster. So here's a little Payne's gray, again, mixed in with that field green. What does that do? It makes it a little bit darker. Oils, when you think of those, you're, at least for me, I automatically think of painting dark to light. That is probably the way a lot of folks paint even with their acrylics you, you say why did you prime it that lighter color if you're just putting the dark stuff over the top well for the longest time I used to prime figures what would you say a neutral gray it was well it was easy everything was always the same but it was about context right and the idea there is you've got Let's lighten this up just a touch. Maybe give it a touch of red. There. If you paint, let's say, a Space Marine's face, and you got a prime black, well, everything next to black looks light. So, just without thinking about it, without even realizing that your colors on that face get darker and darker and darker. And then, if he's a black Templar, or even ultramarine or whatever dark angel when that darker color goes next to that face it, the face is going to look weird it's going to look like he was just irradiated or something same thing with priming at white everything looks dark next to white so your face will be too light once those darker colors finally show up and it removes the influence of the white primer so, yeah, I think it was several years ago we abandoned the white primer, black primer regime. So, our, again, this is the oil brusher right here going in with the rust. So, if, if people have questions, feel free to ask. The last question I still see is Waleed. So, hopefully the chat is still working. Hopefully I'm still talking and doing stuff. I see that I still have frames. I don't have no drop frames, so it seems to be all okay. We're going to go back to this guy now. And I like to have all my colors out here on the palette where I can just access those real fast. And you say, well, you know, what do you, you haven't really done a whole bunch except just make a bunch of things darker. We've actually laid down a significant amount of color here because remember this is a chess match right here I have to think further down the road because remember the, the opening move is the primer our next move maybe we get some pawns out of the way now we're starting to do that thing where maybe we get our bishops and our knights moving out well then later on this is where we start to say, okay, the queen's going to move here. We use it in combination with the knight, something like that. You're thinking those future moves, but you're doing that at the start instead of just kind of at the end. You have to kind of think strategically with these because, well, there's a whole set of advantages to using oils. Why not utilize those? There, so we get a little more of a dark color here. Let's say we want to do blonde here on this guy. 
we're not going to start with blonde. We're actually going to start with a darker brown. I'm just going to drop that in. And you can see it's not significantly lighter, hardly at all, but there's a little color slash temperature difference. And all the while, for those that are maybe just coming in on this, the whole idea here is we're using thicker paints on top of these initial thin glazes. And don't be afraid to remove a little paint here and there. Don't be afraid to do that. So again, here you can see that I started to throw in some lighter colors. Oh, kind of go back to the chat here. Ah, okay, that's good. Yeah, sometimes, uh, and this is the same thing with the Facebook Live. Sometimes I had to just ask <laughs> the folks that were watching, can you hear me now? Is this still working? Is this mic on? Here, let's get to some of that Payne's Gray over here. Because we've got some chain mail going on. Just throw a little bit over that, and now it's almost like a purplish gray. And we're going to throw the same thing over the sword. And for anyone who's curious, I discovered that MIG Ammo does make metallic oils. And I know I've used them on a few of my Facebook Lives, but I'm going to do an entire Song of Ice and Fire, probably Stark, Swordsman, something like that. I'm going to do the entire unit with the oil paints. And for the metals, instead of using my usual non-metallic approach, I'm going to go more true metallics with it. And I'm really looking forward to that because it does work. I was surprised. The oil paints that MIGAMO makes, or the, the metallics, have a really fine oh, mica flake in there. So you get some pretty nifty results. So I can, here I'm going to make a little bit of purple right here. I'm just going to chunk it right on that sword blade. It doesn't even look like purple. It's just going to pretty much register as gray. Let's find a few other places for the same color here. So I'm going to throw it right over here. You say, what in the world is going on? It's heresy. Nope. We're actually just trying to access all of these nifty different tones. You notice this gets to be more the color of the ground, because even though this is not a reflective surface, it's not armor plates or anything like that, we want to have the surface of that ground reflected here just a touch. So I'm going to throw out a little bit more of my field green here. And good, it's still on the... Still on the palette cam. Get some of this. Back to the Payne's gray once again. And again, we got these nice, smooth, flowing cloaks with all kinds of nifty stuff going on. Like so. And... This is another reason why I use, what, 35 set craft brushes, especially at this stage, because uh, you can see this, this is taking a little bit of a beating here. And, well, you can see that even once it gets beat up, it's still usable. I'll make the inside of the cloak a little more reddish. See that big old batch of the original wash right there? Take that. I'm going to use it. This is the other reason why I do that initial glaze, because the colors that I put on next, so I can actually access those, utilize them. Same thing over here. And it will be shiny. There's going to be some reflections. It's just the nature of the beast. You have to have the lights. <laughs> There's no way around it. Got to have the lights on. And they will occasionally make things have those little crazy 
shadows and highlights on him. So yeah, I'm just going to take that original color there. I'm just going to pull it right out over his sleep, darken that down, pull it right out over here. Ah, what about the hair? Make the hair more of a reddish color. Why not? Let's do that. Bang, here we go. Right over the top there. But yet, allowing some of that original mix. That original glaze gets down in there. And let's find one that has some. Right, so here we go. Here's our guy with the blonde hair. I think you can see in there, there's a little bit of reds in there. There's some browns, even a little touch of green in some areas. And believe it or not, we also did some glazes in there. That's the other reason why I tried to have things at different stages, because you can actually, yes, you can glaze wet oils over wet oils. It sounds insane, but it actually works, which is cool. So I'm mixing a little bit of that purple color in here and I'm just trying to get some paint here on this fur and I think you saw in the picture from the cool mini site there from the Song of Ice and Fire page that was not it's not like the usual fur here white fur it's much darker so I'm gonna try and keep that try and keep that going too so let's get ourselves a little bit of a skin tone which is basically just some sort of a red some sort of a yellow some sort of a blue or some sort of off-white you know, we're gonna see what we got here I'm gonna get a touch more of that red lighten that up let's see how close we got uh, not too shabby huh let's lighten it up just a touch more maybe uh, yeah, that is not too bad. Another thing I love about oils is that mixing up skin tones is just so much fun. And watch what happens here. Now, when you work with uh, the oils and you've got wet paint on there, watch what happens is I... So this is the neat thing. See how that started to mix together right there? This started to mix with this color. But now I've got... I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's purple on the end of those bristles. Means I have to go back in here and do that process again. I have to go back in here because I believe he's not wearing gloves. He's just got his regular old hands. So this is probably throwing that notion of base coating on its head for most people. Well, that's good because even when I use acrylics, I don't base coat. I kind of do the same thing I'm doing here, but I don't have this luxury of just eh, wandering around, picking some things out. Eh, here, let's take some of this green over here and oh, what happens if I do something like this? That little motion that I just did there, and that's not the lights, that's actually that light color just just drop that in there see how that brush gets a little bit polluted with the color that's already there let's go back over here grab some of that green make this so it's not so much where the lights influence it here we go and we're gonna do the same thing here now what if we go the opposite way here and take something that's a lighter red and we're going to get down in here and lighten this up just a touch a little bit more let's see we're starting to get this turning motion here on this long instead of this just being light and this being dark it's light it's dark but it's and there's another light here but it's also different colors people won't when they're looking at this they're not going to keep track of how the colors shifted ever so slightly that's just not going to happen and that's good because that means you're becoming the master illusionist that's what we are that's what we're trying to do is trick people into believing that well a 2d surface is actually 3d or this little tiny guy that's an inch and an eighth tall 
is real, potentially. So let's drop a little bit of lighter colors on this. Maybe even some on the base. And you'll notice every so often I'll just take the color I'm working with and just put it somewhere else. That's an important thing, too, because when you do your miniature, whatever colors you choose, you should have them be everywhere on the figure. So if you're going to use green somewhere, you should use it everywhere. And by that, I mean everything has to be the same shade of green, but if you can maybe in the shadow area ever so slightly get a suggestion of green, that's good. doesn't have to be some kind of Christmas tree green or something like that. Or if it's red, it doesn't have to be bright red everywhere. These gloves that he's wearing, technically they are red. It's the reddest, most red thing on this figure right now. So everything is relative. Oh, you see what I did there? I just grabbed a little bit of white spirits to thin this down because I'm just thinking I want that to cover there. And at this point, now I need to think about thinning the paint down a little bit. So let's do one more guy here. A couple more with the skin tones. You can see how there's already... I don't have to do a whole bunch there. Here He also has no gloves on. We'll give him a little bit of this skin color here. Do one more guy, and what are we going to do? We're going to go back to those robes. Going to go back to those robes and have some fun with them. So, bam, just going to throw that on the face. So he does not have gloves on, or he does not have bare skin on his hands. That's good. We won't mess with that. All right. Cloak time. Now, here we go. We got our nice wide filbert brush. We're going to throw out a few other colors here. So just a blue. Throw that out there. Oh, I think I'll throw another shot of my field green maybe out here. If I got some. Yeah. I'm going to replenish my rust color there. Got a little bit of the dark green. Some of that feel green again. And I'm going to replenish some of my lighter colors here, too. Just a little bit right there. I think that's still on the palette. Yeah. All right. So hopefully... It's weird. My analytics say that zero people are watching right now. <laughs> I'm not quite sure if that's correct. But I'm just going to keep going with this because at least it's a video. There. Now watch. I've got myself a little bit of a bluish green here. It's a little bit lighter. And I'm going to drop it on. right over the top of that. Yeah, so my XSplit says 12 people are watching. That's good. There. Now you could see that I was kind of scumbling this in, mixing it in with what was already there. That is something that you just can't do with acrylics. Let's go to one of these here. So this one's really nice and dark. Yeah, watch what happens. Oh, Bethany says people are watching, so XSplit is right and YouTube is wrong. <laughs> I'm glad. But watch what happens right here. See that? Here, I'll do it here. It's oriented this so you can see it. Nice little brush stroke right there. But see how dark that got? I had to go back and get 
some fresh paint here and now it's it's light again here, let's do a little more it's light again do a little more here and I always have plenty of these brushes just kind of sitting around and I've got one that's a little more let's find one that's nice and dry here there's another one just sitting around doing nothing I'm gonna grab him and there we go we are going to blend that now you can really see it look at all that junk on that brush which means have to get rid of some of that. I can grab it again. See how that's all nice and feathered? Look at that. So instead of having to mix a whole bunch of colors together, do a whole bunch of layers, what I did, I just threw one on top of the other and then blended it. Let's say we go even a little bit lighter. So I just threw a little bit of my light color in there. we go so that's a little bit lighter got again just the same old craft brush gonna use it as a blending brush and I'm just gonna pull this like so so that is the really nifty thing, right, if you're looking for one property of oils, this is it. So you, you, everybody's got cloaks on miniatures. There's cloaks everywhere. But let's say for most of the time you're just using oils on cloaks to make this process easier. Why not? Why not go ahead and do that? This is the other interesting thing about oils is here I'm gonna go back to my darker green here. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna throw a little bit of that green right there on that pack. So what I'm gonna do is leave this gonna sit here for a little bit and I'm gonna grab a different one of these and we'll we're gonna work with some of our yellow ochre there we go and let's get some lights on this backpack here there see how that just blends itself but now once again you've got some extra get some dirty color on that brush we have to clean it off get some fresh color and you can see we can see how we can cover that over no problem. Now, eventually I will have to thin down that paint. Here we are. Gonna add a few more lights over here. like so and I'm gonna take a little bit of that lighter color mix it in with my reddish browns here we are that changes that just ever so slightly it's not a lot lighter it's a little bit lighter Say on some of these items here, if I thin it down a little bit, get rid of that little extra piece of fuzz there. So now I can start to, you know, let's get his hand with a little more of a skin tone type color. And remember, we got a long way that we can go. So right here, check that out, what a difference that makes. We've gone a little bit lighter now. But what I can do is take some of this away. 
And then I can blend it just like what we did on the coke there. Yeah, let's go back to our bluish green up here. Do the same thing, just gonna drop this on top of his head. You can see we just worked that color down. I know one thing that can happen to people when they're first using the oils, they never quite know when to stop working it. That's more of a feel type of thing as you get used to it like anything else, it's a new thing. Because what I did was the same thing that we did here on this guy. I'll keep going. Here, let's make this a little bit lighter. All right, like so. And we need some differential between these two. What are we going to do? We're going to drop this right down in here. Same thing here. And remember, we've got our brush that can do some blending. So we'll take that, make sure all the wet paint is gone. And now we're just going to a few strokes to blend that. Get rid of the nasty stuff. Even here on this, on the backpack, we can do the same thing if we want to. And get rid of some of that. And if you're not comfortable with the larger brushes, well, you can use smaller brushes. There's, I, I try not to throw down a bunch of things and say, okay, you must do this or you must do that. It's not not trying to do that. This is more about ideas because I'm pretty sure that, like me, most of you never really thought of using oils on miniatures. Just It's not done. And if it hadn't been for doing the historicals, I, I may not still, still might not be using oils on miniatures which would be kind of a bummer, as you can see how fun it is. As I take a little bit of that rust color, there's some straps going across his shoulders like this. This one doesn't quite have those. Now let's maybe throw out a little bit of here. I'm going to throw out just a touch of red. Right like so. Here we are. Doesn't take much. get that over here and all I'm trying to do is create a little different color say why don't you just use the raw sienna there well that's kind of the orange side I'm looking for something that's a little more almost towards the blue and oh look at that I might even use some of that green sort of graze it down a little bit just gonna throw some of that in here and leave it that is, that's the other thing that happens to people is they, it's hard for them to just do one brush stroke like that and leave it. You know, we're just going to do one big old brush stroke down there. We're going to leave it. This is the other advantage of the oils. It's hard as heck to reach down there with a brush and acrylics and do about 10 layers of paint. It's really tough to do that. With oils, it's a whole bunch easier. Now eventually I'm hoping to show you guys that, that notion of where you take things and you, you wash them and do those washes in there. So that's here. So again, you can do this with a smaller brush too. See, well, look what happens as the brush gets dirtier. As the brush gets dirtier, it's basically mixing with the color that's already there and it's altering what you're throwing on. Which in the case of what I'm doing here, that's exactly what I wanted. So here, let's get a little more green right here. So when I'm doing my usual recorded videos, 
I'd break things up a little bit more because, well, I could stop the video and set things back up again and take you to the next step and sort of prepare you for it. These live sessions, these are more just kind of as they happen. You know, I just have to react to things as they happen. But the, the Patreon page, like the scroll says, the Army Painter Pledge, that's that's the level that pretty much gets you everything. That'll get you about, oh, between 16 and 20 hours of tutorials every single month. And I try to do at least one oil painting based tutorial every month, if not a couple. Sometimes there's more. If, I'm, if the Army Painter Project involves oils, well, then you're going to get a whole bunch of oil painting whole bunch of it. Let's keep going here with our green. But then we said, well, do we want it to all be that level of blue? What if we don't? Remember we got all these yellowish colors here? I'll take some yellow, change the change that green. change that green and now it is a warmer green. I'm going to go like so here. Again, here. And what are we doing? With, see we're just going warm to cool. And now I'm going to bring out another piece to show you what we're trying to do here. So here we go. Let's grab this. There's another thing that it's got basically greens on it. See how that green is warm? And down here it gets to be almost a grayish blue. Well, let's do our trick here. Do our little trick with the color intensity. We're going to drop it down to zero. So you see how the shading is not affected at all. The shading looks virtually the same. What's different? We've got crank this up again not only is this warmer that's cooler but this is more of a bright color see how that's sort of a grayish why is it gray there's snow underneath there we're trying to reflect the color of the snow at least a little bit because miniatures should basically take on their environment otherwise you can do this really nifty marble base or a fire base or something and they're not going to look like they're actually standing on that base. They're just going to look like, well, they jumped on it just that second. And <laughs> nothing's really, there's no real reason for them to be on a lava base when there's no, there's no lava on, reflected on the figure. Or maybe there's some kind of glowing diode or something like that. Let's get to the pants here and do some lighter colors on that. You notice I just mixed sort of a dirty brownish color there. Totally different from everything else. We're going to lighten that up a touch. You see this scumbling motion that I'm doing here? Like that. That's the nifty thing that you can do with these brushes, even when they're kind of on the beat up side. They still, they are still quite functional. Yeah, let's get some lighter colors up here. People say, well, what about doing the non-metallic metal thing? Well, you can do that with oils too. Let's, let's get some lighter stuff out here on the palette again. Just like that. Because here's some swords. So that was all done with the oils. You can see we tried to get some reflections of the ground color in there, tried to reflect some of the figure in there. The Song of Ice and Fire swords are really nicely sculpted, so it makes it kind of easy to do your non-metallic. So here's our light blue that we're going to drop into this. 
Look at the difference that makes. Remember that purple that was sitting over here? Yeah, let's hold it this way. So it just kind of blends right into that. What are we going to do? We're going to get a touch of it this way. Look at how that just blends itself. That is the beauty of oils. Let's go a little lighter here. A little bit lighter. So now we've got ourselves a little bit of difference between those two. Now we'll go to the other side. Let's do the opposite. Let's get some darks on the other side. You can see that I'm taking a little bit of my darker color here. And drop that in right like so. So you can see that's starting to again, take shape. Now it's going to be, again, a little bit on the shiny side because it's wet. You're looking at wet paint, so look at that. See, we haven't even gotten to our brightest color yet. There. Now let's maybe do something on that sword hilt. So you can see now I'm getting a little more into my more of a yellowish type color there. You can do more. You can add a little bit more onto that eventually here. Let's get a little bit there. Let's drop some right down here. Why are we going to do this? I yeah, just wanted to show you a little something here in a second. So let's do something with our straps right here. Get those just a little bit, a little bit lighter. See here, it just again, it kind of blends itself. And what you can do, let's say we want to get some, maybe some darks or whatever on that. So what I'm going to do is take my white spirits here. So look familiar to a lot of folks who like to glaze. And what are we going to do? We're going to drop some of that right in there. Now oils are going to work differently. You have to think of that capillary action, which means you just touch it and let it do its thing because there's wet oil paint underneath there. If you start to move it around, you see how that starts to mix it all together? So, unless that's what you want, and there's no reason that says you couldn't do that. I do it all the time. That's something you want to think about. Now here we're going to take some of that Payne's Gray, a little bit of our blue here. And we're going to do something similar, except going to do some of that right here. So yes, it is possible to glaze with oils wet into wet. And I know it just sounds insane, sounds crazy, but yes, you can do that. Now, doing the same thing here with some of the fur. All right, and I did that multiple times. Oh, where's some fur? There we go. This guy's the same guy. So I did that a few times after I made it lighter here. You can see I did some same kind of little glazes in here. And now look at the difference here in the sword blade. I had some more yellows out there. All right. And I'm going to put him off to the side so we know which one is which. We're going to grab a little bit of our lighter red color here for the inside of that robe. There 
there we go and even thinking about some of the hands let's do something on the face here and let's find ourselves nice small brush here somewhere there we go and yes you can use small brushes too this is the other interesting thing so this brush was totally destroyed and you can see it's kind of beat up it was worthless for acrylic painting but for oils it's entirely different I'm just going to there. Just want to get the chat back in case there's any questions. So we're going to lighten this, lighten up our skin tone there. And we're going to drop in some lighter skin colors here. Just like so. And where I see other light areas, I'm going to do the same thing because what are they going to do? They're going to mix with other colors that are already there. I know I want that to be a little bit lighter. And I can even take a different brush here. And I can even blend some of those together a little bit, tone them down. that and let's just do something right here I'm gonna see if we can't get ourselves a couple of lighter dots for the eyes here while we're at it and then you can see the difference in just how light or dark this is let's see you can do precision things with the oils So again, I I see that there's 11 viewers out there, so I'm just going to assume that the stream is still going, and I'm just going to keep on going. Because once again, I can turn this into a regular edited video, render it up. Here we go. Let's get a little let's get a little red into our skin tones here. Just a little touch of this. rosiness here right there because you got a lot of blood vessels there in your in your fingers and your hands for obvious reasons because they're so sensitive just get a little bit of a more of a reddish tone there and into his, into his skin tone here And even take some of our darker colors back in and what I'm trying to do here is take you through the process of this guy because again the army painter series those are many hours long I don't have as much time here, but you can see how we go about the the initial phases of it. I do want you to see some parts of this that are more along the lines of a finished result. So I'm making something that's a little more of an orangey red here. This sort of is more of a highlight there. And just start to lighten this up. There we go. I don't even mind getting a little bit of that warm red in some parts of the cloak too. Speaking of the cloak, and this is this is cool because you can go, oh, you know what? Let's just throw some lighter colors on the cloak. Let's do that right now 
just like we did before there's a little review like all right there see it's doing the same thing it's blending along and it's very you can see how dry that is I'm not putting any not putting any white spirits in there maybe a touch here and you see how it, it totally changes how that flows it flows a lot better and I need to do that on each of these subsequent layers I, I need to get a little more and then a little more and a little more of the white spirits in there to thin those down and maybe this now as you, as you see this process play out for what oh, an hour and 15 minutes you see why these oils don't take a week to dry as you can see these are being applied pretty pretty darn thin these are not your <laughs> not your average sort of slop them on oils although it looks like we slopped it all on definitely thinning it down there's a little bit lighter color here you can go a lot lighter now again the it's shiny so you're gonna see some reflections see how that just gets a little bit lighter each time a little bit lighter thinking about the shoulder up here thinking about that shoulder thinking about this end of the cloak so now we've got a little separation there between that flowing edge of the cloak I'm not going to do that all the way down so I just did it here there's no highlight there no highlight there uh, it took me a while gets for years I used to oh it's an edge gotta highlight that edge mm, don't necessarily want to highlight every single edge to within an inch of its life sometimes you just gotta let those things again go from light to dark to light now let's think about this we need some shape under here too need some shape under there let's take some of that sort of grayish red I think I've got this lined up pretty well there we go right in there and then again down in here take a tiny bit of this we can lighten it up maybe there lighten it up slightly but this is supposed to be a shadow so I said it's a light mid-tone what's a mid-tone well as you might imagine it's that color that's halfway between light and dark or that level of value Here, let's yeah, do this side over here same thing I don't want to ruin that nice dark right there but right here in the middle you just get a touch of lighter color there. And look at how that just blended nice and smooth. Maybe we'll throw a little bit here too. This part on the top of his shoulder, certainly. We want to get that a little bit lighter there. Like that. Go a little bit lighter. A little bit lighter and even though when I first slap this here it's gonna seem too light time for the blending brush here we go I've got that yeah right where you can see it what are we gonna do I'll make that scary edge make that go away so now we've got ourselves a nice little blend right there. See how soft that is? See how hard that was? It's not that hard. So here, what are we going to do? The same, same idea in here. 
but I do have to clean off that blending brush. Gotta clean that off once in a while. Because as we grab one of our other other guys here, again, you can see how later on we can go back in with lighter colors. All that kind of neat fun stuff. So we say, well, we need some we need some darks. And here we've kind of lost our lines a little bit. Now we have plenty of dark colors out here on the palette. We'll thin this down, thin that down, and I don't want to call this black lining. It's really not. We're just trying to bring back. See the difference that made right there. We'll do the we'll do the next one right next to it, like so. But because it's thin, it flows down in there. And we're using, again, the smaller brush, which instead of being thrown away, it's given new life because the oils act like shampoo and conditioner. It's amazing what that'll do. There we go. Gonna keep going here. See that we've restored some of our lights and darks in there. We need some darks here too in our sword. Because that sense in just goes right down into that blood channel, blood groove. Poof. The other reason I advocate working on many figures at once, <clears throat> sorry about that, is sometimes if you just let something sit for 10, 15 minutes, it's not dry, but for some reason, <clears throat> sorry, it's dry. It's getting colder again. Again, ice storm outside. It, I don't know, it just, there's something about the paint it's it's still workable just as just as wet but you can almost tell when it's slightly less shiny say so, you know what I can go back in there and I can paint over that just a little bit easier I still haven't even found a way to show that necessarily on camera it's only something that you really see as you're working on it and you say wow that that just looks a little bit different. Just looks a little bit different. And sure enough, when I went to paint over it, it was a little bit easier, no matter whether or not it was thin, whether it was heavy. It's a little bit easier to get the paint on the top of that. And there we are. Let's see, what were some of the things uh, that I've done in oils in past tutorials? I know I've done at least two Dark Sword miniatures in oils. Got a Nocturna figure in oils. There'll be a second one in oils. So I see I just added a little more of a reddish. There we go. That's a little more of a reddish color in there. Why? To sort of reflect the hand a little bit. This needs a little bit of color in that, so if I'm going to do that, now it means I need to add a touch of that here on the sword blade. A little touch of that here. And I can always, well, grab some yellow. Throw that out there. with some of this. And I guess the key when you want to do something that's gold is obviously well yellow is a part of it but you need other stuff for people to see. You need some greens in there, you need some purples. 
because gold is it's a highly reflective material right so it makes it gold after all so just making it yellow lighter yellow or lighter yellow that's only a part of the it's only a part of it right there see we can can start to do some refining here I don't want to get too involved in that always want to move around I'm gonna get myself some of that lighter color back so then we can maybe do a bit of our chain mail here remember I got my that purplish color over here it's gonna end up basically being like a bit of a gray here let's get this out here see we can start to pick out a few of the rings yeah I have to say that well there's a lot of things that I like about these Song of Ice and Fire miniatures the swords especially just tend to be so clean but things like the chain mail oh my goodness on some miniatures it's uh, I'd almost rather just file it off and not have to deal with it but here see what I'm doing we've got a little bit of an extra light right there a little bit of an extra light we'll do this again like so so hopefully you can hear me I don't know if the microphone got dinged or something like that and got disconnected although I think somebody probably would have written a little thing in the chat saying uh, hey we haven't heard anything from you in a while what's the deal speaking of the deal we're gonna deal with this sword here a little bit turn this around I think I've got it where you can see it. Just move along here, give that groove a touch of a highlight. I'll take my finger and I'll move it right along there. Not the thing you have to be willing, <laughs> kind of have to be willing to do something like that. Here, let's get some light on the top of the sword hilt here so we get some separation right that's what we need we need it right there and I get some down in here and a little bit of separation there a little bit of separation here and let's see what I can add I'm just gonna try and get some some green in here on his jerkin right there get some separation between that green and some of the his belt there all right And on the bottom side here, I've got to get myself a little bit of shading along there. But it's also shading that, guess what, reflects some of the brownish colors in the ground. Because we certainly wouldn't want sky colors too far down <laughs> on the underside of the blade. Because, well, it's not really pointing towards the sky. So I'll just do a little bit there. And then we'll go to lighten that up there too. Now, Bethany says, all good. Excellent. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Let's get more of that purple color. We just love, I love putting purple on my sword blades. So we're going to do that. That's going to go here, and it'll be almost barely noticeable. It 
it's just gonna kind of register as gray. Part of it is that purple color. It's not exactly magenta. You can see it's it's already grayed down a lot just by itself. There's we need to right here in the channel. That's all I need. Get that set back up again. Now I want to get myself some lighter colors here on the fur trim. And with the oils, boy, it's so sweet to just go, oh, yeah, I'm take a lighter color here. It's going to mix with there, whatever the heck's in there. Instead of with stuff like this, it can be a pain in the keister, to say the least, to try and paint every single last little bit of fur. And then when you do, you say, well, okay, now I'm, my eye is not drawn to his face. It's drawn to all those little fur that I've painted. And now I've got to knock all that stuff down again, because otherwise nobody's going to look at his face, and that would be weird. Get a little bit more towards the light to just get a few of these edges. And I tell you, something about the oils, it it's conditions your brushes and takes a brush that's so beat up, it's almost unusable, and turns it into this amazing brush that can do almost anything. Like this one right here, if I were doing this exact same task in acrylics, this brush just wouldn't work for it. It's as if the oils are just somehow restoring the bristles. And it's a synthetic brush, too. It's not a... It's definitely not a sable or anything like that. Just a regular old cheap synthetic brush. And even that brush benefits. A little bit of our light color there. Mm, let's see if we can get... There we go. Try this. Few, yeah, a little bit right here. Yeah. And let's get a little bit on our on the guy's hand. A little more here. Reflection on this sword blade right here. Yeah, like that. Maybe a touch of a lighter color under here on the underside of the sleeve. Watch how that just blends itself. So I'll take off some of this extra paint. Do I have that? Yeah. It's right here on his cuff. Okay. And that just then we just get this really nice smooth turn here. Just no work at all. Now, I suppose the work comes in understanding how that functions. And that comes with practice. Because, believe me, I've painted, it's taken me painting a lot of miniatures with oils just to get to this level of understanding. Because when I first touched oil paints, I thought, okay, yeah, these are neat. Maybe I'll paint 20% of the figure. Maybe I'll go nuts and paint 40% of it with the oils. Then all the rest of it I'll just do with acrylics. I'll wait for the oils to dry. It's good for that initial broad surface work and nothing else. Then I don't remember when, but I tried it and I actually painted entire figures with oils. And I said, wow, that it works. Now you have, to, you have to kind of do what I just did here. Where, so what do we have? We have a figure like this that we started to develop a little bit more. We have ones like this that are maybe 90%, 90% done. We have ones like this. At first I thought this is about as far, maybe, maybe this is as far as I could go with oils. Maybe no farther than this. I thought I can't paint the faces. Certainly can't paint the eyes. Well, 
as I grab this one here, again, the entire face, that was all done with the oils, the eyes, the hair, everything. And that just it showed me that, yeah, it is possible. You can do it. And, and well, you guys can, too. It may, may take you a while to practice. But what did you, as far as cost-wise? So you spend $20, 25 bucks on a set of oils. It'll last you forever. We're going to use the same brushes because I know this question just came up last night during another hangout. I will take these exact same brushes and use them on acrylic figures because these brushes, the reason they're beat up to start with is because I've been using them on acrylic figures. So people ask what I clean them with. I start cleaning with the white spirits, of course, but the deep cleaning, if you want to call it that, that is done with rubbing alcohol. It's the miracle cleaner. I can clean super glue out of a brush with that stuff. It's really amazing what that can do. So I'll just keep on getting the little lights in there. And now we'll go back to our smaller brush. So we'll just we'll stick with refinement mode here. Cause you've seen the down and dirty stuff, but now I think some of you want to see uh, what can it do when it comes to some finer lines. Look at that. So those are all over wet oil paint. It is thinned down slightly. Do it again. Just like so, and then we've got another dagger in here. Let's go over to this side. I think what can trick people is with oils, you have, well, you have to be direct with acrylics too. There's, I try and tell people make every brush stroke count with acrylic paints too. But with oils, it really rewards purposeful brush strokes, I guess that's the word. Because as you've seen, it's not just going to dry instantaneously and let you just paint right over it. You'll have to wait a little bit to get to that. So let's go back to a not so much of a yellow here. Put some here. Now we need to darken this down, get some shading in there. I'm going to really thin that down a bit, and it's practically a glaze here. What are we going to do? We're going to take those two, and we're going to join them together. Same thing there. And now some lighter skin tone. I just have my nice little mass of skin tones over here. I think we've got that about right. What I might do is, let me get to my controls here. I'm going to cut down the brightness a bit. Just a bit. There we go. So we're doing some eyebrows on him. I'm going to lighten up the cheekbones here. Just a touch, the nose. Let's get a little more lights on his beard. Yeah, these guys got lots of beards, that's for sure. There's no shortage of facial hair on the Night's Watch. And again, for the folks that may be coming in, this is the Song of Ice and Fire Night's Watch. We've got a couple of things I'm working on. Ranger Trackers, Ranger Hunters. I think these are the Sworn Brothers. There are also some character figures. 
you can go onto my blog. Uh, I think you can see the scroll there at the bottom of the page. You go to the blog, you will be able to find, oh my goodness, there's already dozens of posts now on the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures. I think my, my favorite unit so far definitely has to be my Lannister halberds. So I'm just going to set that down so that just I need to give my hand a little bit of a rest there. Here we go. Let's grab these guys. So this was one of my one of my painting tutorials here of five episodes on how to do the Sky Earth non-metallic. There was some free hand, obviously, some reds. We did the basing. Talked how to negotiate that with the movement tray, the snow effects. And it all started out a little bit like this. So this is another future tutorial. Recognize these guys? Yep, I think these are the Sworn Brothers. Sworn, Sworn Brothers, yeah. So again, that same tree bark, gravel. Nothing reflects nature like nature. Why not? Here, let's get some of this. Let's get some lighter color in here. Go back into this part. Start to find ourselves a few more light areas here. Remember, I still got that rosy color down there. Mix that in. My blending brush here. There it is. We're just going to just take a little bit away here. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to soften that. You can just soften up some of these harder edges. Or areas where things just doesn't seem like they blended very smoothly. We can just go back in there. Again, with this, and you can make a, it doesn't have to be that size, too. It can be a smaller, a smaller version of that, no problem. Here, let's see if we can find some more lights on the cloak. You notice I never stay in one area. It's important that you not get bogged down in the just doing the sword hilt. Well, maybe there's a whole other area that has a virtually no color on it. It keeps you from getting bored. I've seen that happen so often with people. They just get absolutely bored with what they're doing. And since for most of you guys, this is supposed to be your fun thing. It's different for me because I am compelled to finish things if I want to be able to eat and have things like heat and roofs. For you guys, your reason for doing this is a lot different. But it's still kind of the same thing. You don't want to get bored with it. And you certainly need to be able to do things quickly. You can see how fast it was to just throw down those basic initial thing, and get these cloaks to be nice and smooth in a jiffy and we can even here let's try and get a little bit of greenish tone in the skin let's see if we can do that it's almost darn near a glaze here Can you see it? Yeah, you can. So just a little bit of a grayish green in the skin. Here, I'm just trying to get a little bit of a... Can you see it? There, that's better. So when I'm doing these YouTube Live things, there's instead of... I think it's two windows. I've got four of them open. And they're just... Nothing is in its normal places for what I'm filming. I'll give him his little widow's 
peek there. Can get a little more dark over here. Let's see if we can't find a, a little area here to do some lighter blue on that sword. Oh, I'm going to say maybe here. Just a touch right there. So now I think you can see the difference between the, the purple there and the blue over there. And again, if I see something that is not quite smooth, I'm going to grab my blending brush. Smooth those two out. Now, how many times messing around with sword blades and stuff, I had to go back over and over it again to try and smooth things out. And I've done some really huge, wide sword blades on large critters or whatever. And I was amazed. I think that was the first time I really discovered some of the nifty value of oils and, and how that can... Yeah, make your life just a little bit easier. So here, I don't want that to get too reddish because you got plenty of red over here. I see an area here that needs to be blended. See that? Where there's just like a little line right there? Well, not anymore. That now is a very super smooth blend right there. It looks like I spent 20 minutes on that one little portion of his sleeve. Clearly I did not. And I'm going to get a little bit more of a light there. And here. Here, let's get a little more light on, his, on the end of his fingers here. Right, like so. And see how everything starts to things just start to emerge as we refine. A little bit of refinement here. And now I'm gonna grab some grab a little bit of yellow here. Let's see if we can't do something different here with this leather. It's kind of looking all... Well, there is some grays in there, but I'm going to try and get even some more... some more color injected into this. So why not go absolutely insane and we're going to put some of our sword gold color in there. Why are we doing that? Just to try and make things look a little more distinct, a little more interesting. Again, I'm going to take that blending brush and see some of that gets knocked down. Well, let's let's try a different let's try a different green here. I'm going to take some of that yellow. Let's mix it with some of the green. To me, this is the fun part with oils. So we say green, green, green. Let's put it over here. Now you notice. Good, you can see that. See how that's reddish there? It's basically reflecting that color. Trying to reflect that color. So let's see if I can't get a little green in here. Yep, that's what I wanted. I just needed that much. I didn't really change the value of that so much as far as light and dark. But what I did there is a hint of green. And now that is the opposite of that red right there. Maybe I'll drop you in a little bit more. Now as we turn this around, what's underneath here, that's again more of a warm brownish color. Go back up here, let's try a little bit of green right there. Let's see if we can't get a little green into his sleeve there. Got some grayish color here, the bottom of the palette. 
I'm going to see if I can't work that into some of these little diamond shapes here. So I, this is why I said early on, don't panic. You know, For those of you that love details and everything else, there will be plenty of details. Plenty of details. Here, let's go back in here. And now we've got some of that store. Let's make this a little bit darker here, too. Why not? So that's not too that's not too horrible. We need to restore this line right here. And it is it's thinned down enough to flow easily, but not thin down so much because again it's oils. If you thin it down too much, that capillary action I told you about, boy, it's just gonna it's just gonna slink away. So you need to have just enough liquid in there again and make it flow it can be a little different here uh, with oil with water you can almost have it say sit on the edge of a cup and just kind of sits there with any kind of a oil wash or whatever it would just go right down right down the edge of that cup because it just it has way less resistance than the water it does have a tension I guess that's the word I'm looking for way less tension with the oil now in more ways than one I would say so again just saying okay I need to be a little bit darker there we can Get a little separation here. Always try and find another place to, well, you know, let's pump a little contrast here, add a little more interest. I get that right there. And I know this is a crash course, needless to say. That is why I suggest you to check out the other videos on, on the YouTube channel here. You can still see a lot of them. Well, you can still see all of my old Facebook Live sessions. They're all there. Every single one. I think some of the very first ones that I did with oils are still there. So you can check those out. I'm going to see if I can't get a little more of this rosy color in a few spots here, like on the nose. Yeah, a little there. A little bit there. The cheekbone. Forehead. There's just a few places where you can find these little sort of charts here where people tend to have more say green on their face or more of a grayish color or where it's more rosy pretty much has to do with those where those blood vessels sit as far as how close to the surface they are Here, let's lighten this up a touch. Get some knuckles on his hand. And on his ends of his fingers here. Now the rocks down here, I would not go too crazy getting highlights on those because they're just rocks and most likely you're going to have some kind of landscape material around that. And 
do his boots here a little bit. And let's go back into our nice thin down dark color here. And a few of these dark folds. I'm just going to do a quick check of the chat here. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, hey there, Anorexic Shark. Uh, I see that you're painting your giants now. Yeah, those were really fun. Actually, I've got two more to paint, and I thought I'd paint those in oils. So that would be uh, the first one. That one's on the YouTube channel. And I've got a second one that's for the patrons of the Patreon page. And I will... I'll do the next couple of guys in oils there so you get to see how that works. And anytime you know, you're watching the videos, anytime uh, you drop the like or the share on a video, that is always appreciated because it makes YouTube happy and then they're more likely to let people see these things and then more people can see crazy wacky stuff like this really insane notion that yes you can paint a miniature with oil paint it can definitely work how long have we been doing this here a couple hours we've been Alternating on, I think it's on like eight different miniatures. Let me count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, eight of them. And there's been eight different miniatures flashed in front of the screen here. We're going to refine this edge here a bit. And then here, I'm going to drop some of that lighter color. Once again, this is the blending brush, and watch, see, we just did that edge. Now, can you see, see there's some roughness there? And all of a sudden, that just goes away. That's such a cool thing, and the more I, I learn about how to control these things, the easier it is to do stuff like that. I was just working with these again so the last all this week I've been working with oils and I was working with on the live session but then I was working with them again because well you know, these are for commission and I just started doing things that I didn't think had hadn't either occurred to me before I just wasn't sure it would work and next thing you know, absent-mindedly, I was doing stuff I'd never actually tried before. Now let's see if we can't do a few little... I'm going to add some dots here. One, one dot, another, another, and another. So I didn't go around the whole thing. I just added these little dots here. See if we can't make those a little more on the bluish side. Yeah, I can now add just a little touch of blue there. Not not everywhere, just in a few spots, and then we're gonna take that same blue. See if we can't work it into a little bit of this. Yeah. Again, it makes that big old broad surface look a little bit more a little fun to look at there. Let's see if we can drop in just a touch of lighter color here. And once again, get that where you can see. Ah, now you can see it. So again, blending, brush. Just going to get in there and like that. Now remember I told you before about waiting a while? 
one of the reasons that worked so well is because well we haven't we haven't touched that area in maybe I don't know 15 20 minutes or so it's amazing what happens when you just let an area set itself cure just a little bit Let's see if we can get some lighter edges on these How's about something like that? And here. Now we need to get some light on this part of the sword. Even the knuckles here a touch. So I'm just going to drop some lights there. I'm going to do a little bit of a highlight on that. Lighten up that one area there on the sword so we have some variation see in the in our lights and darks and tones now. Yeah, Mr. Blending brush. Just gonna pull that stuff. Blend it out a little bit. Do the same thing on the sword hilt there just a bit. Now we've got sand here. It's, yeah, there's a few little areas that needed some cleaning up there. Yeah, let's go a touch lighter on the nose. We've got some, let's get some orange on that beard. It's sort of looking very grayish here. So. Yeah, we don't want a gray beard with red hair. So what are we going to do? We're going to change that up a bit. It's not a lot. Because uh, I'm pretty sure from what people say, the Night's Watch, all of their beards are basically black too. Well, we're changing that up. Because these are almost supposed to be more like Forest Ranger. A little bit like uh, Gondor Rangers, I think. Here we need to get a little more definition on some parts of the hair. Up here. Let's see if we can't find just a few locks of hair that we can bring out. Where's our, again, we have a similar guy here, but his hair we did much darker. That was more of the black hair. And you can see there, again, a similar color on the cloaks. I think that's the other fun thing about foils. Oh, here we go. So we've got a guy that we were working on before, and I see that here I need a little more of a, a little more of an edge on that. I can do the same thing here. And I think the other thing I wondered too, as I was contemplating using the oils, is well, what happens once the paint is dry? Is it even worth it? Because now you lose your whole ability to blend things wet into wet. And this is something that I'll try on future videos it's hard to capture but when the paint is all dry I think I did this on one like the wear shark video whatever that was you can actually when it's when the paint is all dry that blending brush trick thing I did it still works but instead of blending two colors together you're just literally blending the one so you're kind of taking some of the paint away essentially and you're smoothing it out so let's get ourselves a little bit of a bright spot there. That's it. Leave it. Now there's a little bit of a bright spot there. Leave it. We're going to go.
go in here just find a few highlights in there Yeah, I can only imagine people there, they come in and, and this is the first thing they see is all of this. Now remember, you can always go back and watch these things from the start. It'll be there on, on the YouTube channel. I think it takes a little while for it to show up there. At least the one that I did the other day, it was not visible there right away. So that may take some time. How's about that? Now let's say, you know, you know what? we don't want that to be red there. I want to make that green. So there's a couple of different things I could do. I could take one of these sponges. Remember I said you can wipe it all away? Well, I just wiped it all the way down to primer. That's all the way back down to the original primer coat there. Basically, that was a little bit of a booby trap because I wanted to show you how it's not that difficult to make a course correction. And we're going to do that right now. Like that. Remember, we have to get some of this green over here on the sword blade or sword hilt 2. So we did that. So we've already got it shifted towards the green. Now let's start to add our lighter colors onto that. Like so. And it doesn't take long to go from the incorrect cloak color to more what we had everywhere else. And I'm going to actually get a little more yellow into this green. Just cause. Making sure to get a little bit of my white spirits in there. And you don't necessarily that big giant brush. That doesn't have to be your only blending brush. I can use this. I just dried it out. Watch what we'll do. We'll do the same thing. So I just drag this. Just dragging that down onto the rest of the cloak. Now here, we're going to change the directions. I'm going to pull this this way. See what we're doing there. And i got to get some of that old, some of the junk off of there. A couple of strokes. Clean that off. A couple more here. So there you go. So we completely changed that. And what else did we do? We have a few forms of contrast now. It's lighter there. Here. Can try even a few more lights right here. That's it. Just do that much and stop. Now, I need here. I'm going to get some yellow in here. Right here on this sword blade here. There we go. Liven that up a bit. Then get some more. Light colors on his sleeve. Let's do some more. And that, we just completely transformed this area. So that's, it's all right, kind of sucker punched you there, but I, I needed the shock value of that because I said it's as simple as wiping the stuff away and painting back over it. And 
if I don't show you that, well, it doesn't really have a whole lot of meaning then. So that was that was my big surprise for you. And we'll just go in here and get some highlights here too. Oh, well, before I forget, I do want to thank Molly and Bethany for hanging out with me here. You know, Waleed's got a he's got a long shift going on there, a lot of people to take care of, so I hope that all goes okay. I appreciate everybody that shares this and likes it. And it's also a thank you too to everybody that's already on the Patreon page there. And once once this thing goes into its recorded mode on YouTube, I guess we will call it that way. Once it's in the queue, then I'll have a little, in the upper right-hand corner, I'll have a clickable link for you to the Patreon page. You can head over to the blog and check out some of that stuff. So what are we doing now? We're just starting to make this highlight more of that warmer yellow so that it all tracks down this way. It would seem that I beat the ice storm, unless that's just rain that I hear right now. So that was a big concern of mine, was to be able to do this before there was any craziness with power lines or internet things. Alright. So now we've got ourselves a pretty decent set of shading here on his robe on the inside. We did lots of blending there. See like that blend right there. So thanks again everybody for checking this out. And I'll be sure to have lots of fun content for you. Just like this. I'm just going to keep on going and check out the blog. That's where you'll see the finished pictures of these with all their foliage. So thanks again for watching, everybody. I appreciate it, and I will catch you next time.